If another person makes a joke about my name that I'm working at daddy's candy shop, I will probably end up in jail for homicide. If there is any justice in the world, at least the charge will be involuntary manslaughter, because there is no way in hell anyone on God's green earth can believe it isn't beyond my control. Hell, perhaps it would be justifiable homicide. Candy. Not Candice, or Candes or Candice, or even the Greek Kandake. No. My mother and father saw fit to make me candy, start to finish. In that one little respect, I feel a lot like the Johnny Cash song with the boy named Sue. The offender, at the moment, appears to be a sweet guy. He is, like almost everyone in the candy shop, a college kid here in the little town of Lake Pierre. The crazy thing about it is the town was on the shores of Lake Poncelet, not Pierre. Kendra and Nina who work with me at the shop, said there was a funny story about that, but I've yet to hear it. I'm afraid I'm going to tear the boys a new one, but the girl with him saves me the trouble. Oh, sure, Rod, she says. A girl named Candy working in a candy shop. That's just hilarious. I'm sure she's never heard that before. Just brilliant. You jerk. The girl's defense takes away all my irritation, and I say with a smile, You should meet my sister, Lug Wrench. She works at an auto shop. The girl cackles, and the boy says sheepishly, Sorry. Almost instantly, she is my best friend ever, and they leave with a bag full of candy that probably cost a whole lot more than the boy expected to spend. With the way she looks at him, though, I think he'll be fine with everything once they get some time alone. I haven't had time alone with a boy in a long while. I'm not talking about a relationship. I'm not really the kind of girl who goes for relationships. Going out with a boy and getting screwed in a completely non-committal sort of way? That I can do. I can even make it two or three dates on occasion. More than that, though, requires commitment, and commitment requires trust. I'm not sure I've ever trusted anyone completely. I am sure I have never trusted anyone with a penis completely. I suppose Kendra, Mark, and Nina, the three others at Daddy's Candy, are the most trustworthy of all the people I know. Maybe of all the people I have ever known. Especially Kendra. She's letting me stay at her place. When she first invited me to stay with her, I set a little countdown in my head, waiting for her to come on to me. I fully expected her, along with her husband Art, to ask for sexual favors in return for keeping a roof over my head. I was so desperate for a place to stay... I probably would have gone along with it. I'm on my 13th month at their place, though, and they've done no such thing. In fact, they make me pay rent, but take the money I give them and put it in a savings account. It isn't easy for me to trust anyone. In fact, it's damned near impossible. I didn't grow up with a mother and father taking care of me and loving me unconditionally. I grew up too fast, in one state home for children after another, I suppose there was a time when I trusted my fellow orphans, but they'll turn on you just as fast as anyone else. We are all trained to survive and not to make friends. It isn't a pleasant situation, but the truth rarely is. Life goes on, and at present all of my immediate needs are handled. It's as much as anyone has the right to hope for. Sometimes I feel guilty, because by nature my distrust leads to dishonesty. I present a picture to the world that just isn't real. People see me as a sweet girl, wide-eyed and innocent and just so wonderfully normal. There are girls like that in the world. The word for girls like that is simple. Victims. That's what happens to people who view the world through the lens of trust. Even when they're not victims, they're headed in that direction. Not me. No way. I can play the game and smile and make everyone think I'm just like them, but nobody will ever catch me with my guard down. 